Hey there, wanna talk about the 3DS? Well, you see, I had planned a video for the 3DS back in March, but I have never gotten around to it. So why not talk about totally normal 3DS, which you can get anywhere, especially legally. Also, my non-gaming video has been not doing super well, so might as well do this. Yay, recycling game ideas. Well, the gaming library of the Nintendo 3DS is kinda nice. I'd still go ahead and say that the Nintendo DS's library I like a lot more. The 3DS still holds a very special place in my heart, especially for the Street Pass stuff. So let's get to my opinion about the 3 d uh, I mean the 3DS. It was a point in anime history where everyone was trying to cash in on the Sword Art Online Aram craze. In these dark and difficult times, we got Conception 2? Well, it is a dungeon crawler where you have your children <sighs> help you go through dungeons. Oh, and also you get to kiss girls and whatever. It's like a dating sim and an RPG. Ooh. Never heard of that one before. Its gameplay was a bit generic to me, but I really had a lot of fun with it. It's another turn-based RPG. Ooh. And the graphics are surprisingly impressive for the 3DS, with very detailed 3D character models. Impressive indeed. Too bad I didn't care about the story very much, and uh, not enough for me to finish it. But hey, at least we got some Persona-like music! Speaking of weird otaku stuff, there is Project X Zone, which is a crossover tactical RPG with some Tales of Elements? I was one of the few children that watched Namco X Capcom trailers on GameTrailers.com and was like, ooh, I want this, and then I got the game, so I was like, ah, it's pretty nice, and then left I think at chapter 16 or 14, I don't know, the one with the goblin. So so when I replayed it, it had 2D characters in 3D backgrounds, which may not seem like a lot, but you people have no idea how good the 3D effect is. Oh, it pops up like a coloring book, oh my god. I'm going to be talking a lot about 3D effects in this video, oh my god. And the way these 2D characters pop out of the 3DS is just... Mwah. I love it, I love it, I love it. I still mildly enjoyed the tactical gameplay and a little bit the story, but whatever. The 3D effect is what I'm here for. I might as well keep talking about the 2D games, so why not talk about Freaky Forms? Yes, this is the 3DS eShop game that was removed from the eShop and then sold at the store with a <coughs> bonus mode added. Which is obviously why I bought it used at six dollars. Mwahahaha. So this is a game where you explore around with your creation and find stuff to make other creations. Share creations with other people all around the world and that's kinda it. Except not actually, because you got the dungeons! Woo! It's a very, very standard RPG fair that encourages exploration, but also has automated battles, which are kind of fine. It's just that it all depends on the RNG, which means you might sometimes be unlucky. But I still enjoy playing it from time to time. I like it, I like it. Meanwhile, Box Boy is a charming 2D platforming game, but it doesn't have a 3D mode, so whatever. You can just watch a YouTube video and play it on the Switch now. I'll also get Kitty Kara Surprising out of the way, because while the writing is fine, I don't like every character, but... You know, it's some meta Rick and Morty humor. But before Rick and Morty, still I kinda got tired of that humor, so 
If you want to buy it, go ahead. Also, I would recommend an extra RNL. One of the aspects of the 3DS that people have underestimated are the 3D anime cutscenes. 2D animated scenes are interesting to look at on the 3DS because, you know, it adds more depth to the environments and it just feels special to see all these characters pop out of the screen. Either way, both Professor Layton games are fine, but for some reason, the Ace Attorney X Professor Layton game just I just ate it so much. Phoenix Wright became Meg from Family Guy or even Jerry from Rick and Morty. It's just painful to look at. It still has that 3 d -ness, though. Another thing I want to say about the Professor Layton games on 3DS is that the characters are much more expressive despite being in 3D. But now we gotta move on on the Professor Layton likes. Well, there were a few on PC, a couple landed on 3DS, including Dr. Lortrick, as well as a more rhythm-based one. You know, the one from TikTok. Yep, I was as surprised as you are when I discovered that the game I bought in 2012 had the TikTok joke. <laughs> Either way, this is the one I recommend the most out of this entire list. It might have the Professor Layton point and click whatever aspect, including some puzzles and being part of a trilogy, I think. Because the game ends as a cliffhanger. Either way, love the game, love the mini games, and it's probably one of the most memorable games on the system. Or at least a game that I will remember until the day I am lying in my grave, only waiting for everything to consume me. Also, I think the French version sounds more natural, mostly because everyone has a French accent in the English version. Yep, it's one of those cases. Either way, as much as I want a sequel, Sega will probably never make it, but it's okay, it's fine. At least we got some fanfiction. Another surprisingly interesting game from 2012 has to be the JRPG Bravely Default. Inspired by Glee? This is an RPG aimed at casual players with plenty of options and accessibility features that would eventually become standards in RPGs and even remasters. It's very interesting to see how far we We've come. All oh, right, I forgot I brought up an RPG, so the next game has to be an RPG. Wait, I have an idea. The Guild Zero One and Guild Zero Two project were projects by Level Five to allow small developers to make small games, which was a very nice thing to do. The ones I have are the eco-friendly shmup Liberation Maiden, which apparently has a visual novel, but only in Japan. Kinda wish this game was expanded upon, but Grasshopper Manufacturer is having a hard time apparently so whoops there's some kind of airplane simulator but you know what i'll just leave it to the fans there's also a forger simulator but i'll also pass but the game that i want to talk about is crimson shroud imagine if there was a video game rpg that only consisted of figurines and not uh, you know cinematic stuff well there's crimson shroud which feels like a D&D session more than anything else. A D&D session with text? Better than average D&D players, am I right? Either way, the game's models look like actual figurines and it's immersive in a surprising way, especially with the fact that you can roll dices and the 3D pops out too, making you feel like you really own these figurines. Overall, it's a really fun game I'd probably recommend. Also, from the creators of Mighty Number no. 9 comes the War Tank Simulator where you beat bugs? So Panzer and Bugs apparently takes place during World War II, where <laughs> literally tanks are shrunken down and must survive from the assault of 
bugs. Thanks, Inafune. Either way, it's a mission based game with some upgrades, and that's kinda it. It's very standard. The graphics standard, the music standard, everything is pretty standard here. But that still is one hell of a premise. I like it. And since we're gonna talk about all Guild Zero Ones and Zero Two games at this point, might as well talk about Adventure Game Walking Sim Whatever game. That is the Starship Damry. The game does not hold your end at all and it lets you figure things out by yourself. The game has an interesting universe as well as lore and world building, but it has a giant plot twist at the end that I do not want to reveal. So yeah, I'm impressed. Would recommend. Meanwhile, from Millennium Kitchen comes Attack of the Friday Monsters, which honestly it's a banger. You're a kid who gets stolen. Ooh, Friday monsters appear, and it's pretty much that. So you go on a quest to do chores for your mom, but you can also stumble across the way and have fun. There's also a card monster minigame which doesn't add much to the gameplay, but it's still very, very fun. With a nice, interesting, slightly feel good story told by some random narrator. But the best part about the game, I think, is the backgrounds and the character models. The character models are in 3D, but the backgrounds are in 2D. So the game's entire art style just pops up. The game might be on the short side, but whatever, it's still really fun. Another game with pop-up backgrounds and 3D character models is Armo Knight, which was done by Game Freak. It's a nice and simple auto-runner game with complicated rhythm patterns, interesting songs, and an interesting fairy tale like universe. But the thing is that the game uses 3D so well that it just pops out of the screen. And the comic book cutscenes are like, oh, this looks like Marvel, the Armonite cinematic universe. Either way, I would probably recommend this one. There are quite a few other rhythm games on this system, like Rin Maven Gold, but one I enjoyed a lot was the Vocaloid game Project Mirai DX. You interact with your Vocaloid, you play songs, and <gasps> is that Puyo Puyo? Yes, two years before we got Puyo Puyo Tetris, well, we got Puyo Puyo in Natsune Miku, baby! So if the rhythm-based gameplay doesn't please you, well, you can always play that. Or even play Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 and 2. Because a lot of Project Diva fans were disappointed by the more simplistic gameplay on 3DS. Which, I mean, okay, sure! Maybe other people like me who suck at rhythm games could get an enjoyment enjoyment out of it, but have you thought about anyone but yourself, you selfish little bean? Also, if you stop playing after a while, the Vocaloids will be mad at you, like legit mad, and you have to say, come in eh? or whatever weeb thing you can think of. Oh right, Sega on the 3DS, well, there also was Shinobi, but it's kinda there, it's really nice and uses a lot of 3D effects, but it's just that, it's there. If you want to, it's a fun action game, so that's it. It just exists and has a lot of 3D camera angles and that's it. Impressive enough for the 3DS. You know what else was impressive and way ahead of its time, the AR cards. These were cards that you could place and, you know, it's just the characters would pop up, it would be fun. And then Pokemon Go started existing and everyone wanted a slice of that pie, so whoa. But Chibi Robo, no, Chibi Robo don't need no cards. Yeah, I'm not talking about Ziplash because I know there is an army of certain fans of a certain YouTuber which will come in to type THIS GAME BLOWS and flush the toilet, whatever. Either way, Chibi Robo Photo Finder is Chibi Robo on a budget. Like, there are a few areas to explore, but it's mostly to grind things. 
The main mechanic is mostly to take photos, which is fine though. It exploits the Nintendo 3DS. And this aspect was pretty fun. At least more fun than the mini games. I sort of enjoy them, but I prefer exploring the house. It's just that I wish there was more to explore, not gonna lie. But the chibi robo on a budget is what you chibi get. Speaking of cleaning stuff, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is the long awaited Luigi's Mansion sequel that I really wanted since 2001. Did I? I enjoy it? Yes. Did I enjoy it as much as the first one? No. The mission structure is very limited. And there aren't any portrait ghosts. The portrait ghosts are what gave this game such a personality with all their hidden lores and spooky strategies. Despite that, I still had a lot of fun with it, and the ghosts still had a lot of personality. Especially that disgusting bastard. Speaking of disgusting bastard. Remember free to play video games? I miss them so, so much. It's not like there's anything like it now. Either way, Pokemon Rumble World is a game that exists. It's basically a free to play version of the other Pokemon Rumble game. But unlike the other Pokemon Rumble games, this one has microtransactions. <laughs> And a lot of grinding and grinding and grinding. It's fun for the first few hours, but after a while I stopped caring. Not even the 3D effects convinced me, like I get bored after a while and you need to pay to win. While the barely existent story is funny, I just think it's meh. Whatever to make the money, I guess. Arg, 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 arg. Squidward, get back to work. Same thing with Pokemon Shuffle, which, while it's a fun game, it gets straight up impossible after a while, so you have to pay. But we can't pay, because the game isn't supported anymore. Boo hoo hoo hoo. At least it's not Pokemon Unite, but I guess it was to make more money for lower budget games. Like for example, the reason I bought a 3DS, Dylan's Rolling Western. It's a weird mix of tower defense and action. It's like if Zelda had some tower defense segments. And honestly, I enjoyed it a lot. It just felt creative, refreshing, and interesting. I forgot to buy the sequels though. Oops. As they are apparently more of the same. Another game that Nintendo fans ignored is Sakura Samurai Art of the Sword. It's basically a sequel to Punch Out, but without the weird stereotypes. And with the Japanese aesthetics as well as RPG aspects. It might be slightly repetitive and it might be slightly low budget, but I think I kinda love this one. But that same year launched the first physical 3DS game. Steel Diver! <coughs> Can we pretend that some marines in the water like shooting ships? I could really use a ship right now, ship right now, ship right now. <laughs> this joke was 12 years in the making, seriously. Well, this is a more slower paced game. That was originally for the DS, but they just said, why not put it up at launch? Nintendo moment. Either way, for 10 bucks, I enjoyed this submarine sim elements. It's just that it's really, really hard. One of the hardest game on 3DS? Perhaps. I might recommend people to give it a shot, but also they don't really have to. Yes, I think it is fun, but also... Not very accessible. Oops, I forgot about the low budget 3DS game before we move on. Tokyo Crash Mobs is a Nintendo FMV game that takes the gameplay from Magnetica and just adds a lot of more madness. The story is artsy but also interpretative, but mostly silly, just silly. 
If you enjoyed Magnetica, well, no problem, have fun! It has enough new gameplay twists to justify the sequel status, and the 3D actually pops out of your face since the FMV characters are actually sprites. In a period where there absolutely were no FMV games, Nintendo took a stance and released this wonderful thing. Nice. Now we're getting way more FMV games. If anything, games like the new Super Mario Bros. series or the Zelda series exist mostly to make money, to compensate for the losses induced by the more experimental games. Another example I can talk about is Sushi Striker. The game was released both on Nintendo 3DS and on Nintendo Switch, but it's obvious it was made for for the 3DS but then ported to Switch, because Nintendo didn't expect the Switch to sell that well. Same thing happened with the Nintendo DS and the Game Boy Advance. The DS was supposed to coexist with the Game Boy Advance, but then it sold so well that Nintendo was like, Welp, screw the Game Boy Advance! And then they booted the Game Boy Advance in into the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. So Sushi Striker was pretty much a very nice puzzle game. It could also have been on mobile, easily, but the creators were probably like, yeah, no, we don't want microtransactions or to support the game beyond its initial release. So what we got is a puzzle game with some weird story, which I really like and it does a lot of world building actually. It also has some characters who want to be dominated. Uh -huh. Yes, it goes there. Rated E for everyone. This game I had a blast with, honestly. At least on the Nintendo Switch, because at the time I was like, huh, 3DS games, I'd rather play Nintendo Switch games. Yep, I was like that. Either way, this video is over 20 minutes long, so I might as well talk about the Zero Escape trilogy. It's so much better than Danganronpa, oh my god. The only thing is that the plug details are all left vague at the end, which kinda sucks. There's also Unchained Blades, which is a PSP port, which means that the confirm button is the B button. Yep. I also wanted to talk about the Pokemon games I love the most on the system, but that will be for another time. Either way, thank you for watching, have a nice day, and like and subscribe!